Welcome to our lecture online and here we're going to try to find the width of the central maximum. And usually the way we do that is we find the distance, the angular distance from the central maximum to the minimum on one side and we double that to get the total width of the central maximum. So the width of the central maximum is two times the lookup angle to the first minimum. Here in our example we're going to assume that we have three slits and so the first thing we want to do is find the phase difference between one slit and the adjacent slit to the first minimum. That means we need to take the total angle of 360 degrees, a full phase, divided by the number of slits. So 360 divided by 3 is 120 degrees, which means the phase difference between two adjacent slits to the first minimum is 120 degree phase difference. All right, so how do we associate that with the lookup angle? Well, here we have a relationship between the phase angle and the lookup angle, so let's write that down. So we can say that the phase difference is equal to the distance between the slits, d, times the sine of the angle theta times 360 degrees divided by lambda. So now let's go ahead and look up solve for theta in that case. So we can say that the sine of theta, the sine of theta is equal to the phase difference times lambda divided by d times 360 degrees, which means that theta is equal to the arc sine of the phase difference times the wavelength divided by the distance between the slits times 360 degrees. However, it turns out we're usually dealing with very small angles. And at very small angles, the sine of theta equals theta. So we can say that the sine of theta can be replaced by theta itself. All right, so in that case, instead of sine of theta, we can replace that by theta and then solve for theta. All right, so for small angles, the sine of theta is equal to theta. And of course, that needs to be in radians. So if that's true, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace sine of theta by theta in my equation right here. So I'm going to write that the phase angle is going to be equal to d times theta times 360 degrees divided by lambda. So what I did is I took this equation right here. And instead of writing sine of theta, I'm going to write theta because for small angles, sine of theta equals theta. So if I solve this for theta, I get theta is equal to the phase angle times lambda divided by d times 360 degrees. Okay, and that will be theta in radians. So we have theta is equal to the phase angle, which is 120 degrees, times the wavelength, and we assume the wavelength was 500 nanometers, and uh, let's see here, divide that by the distance between the slits. Let's assume that that's 0.5 millimeters, which is 0.0005 meters. And finally, divide by 360 degrees. Okay, let's see what we get. We get uh, 500 e to the 9 minus, because nanometers is 10 to the minus 9 meters. Divide by 3, that's 120 divided by 360 and divide by 0 0.0005 equals, and so the answer is theta is equal to zero, oh, not zero, is equal to 3.33 times 10 to the minus four radians. Now, if we want to convert that to degrees, we have 180 degrees divided by pi radians, so that will turn that into degrees. So all we have to do is divide that by pi, divide by pi, and multiply times 180 degrees, and so we have an answer of theta is equal to 0 0.019, ah, 1.191 degrees. Okay, notice that the width of the central maximum would be 2 theta, so therefore the width, which is equal to 2 theta, is equal to 2 times the value we got for one angle, 0 0.0191 degrees, so multiply times 2, and we get the width is equal to 0 0.0382 degrees. And that would be the angular size of the central maximum. And that's how we do that.